All right, so I'm getting ready to start cooking, and you'll notice that this week, my cooking videos are gonna be in a different spot than usual. I get, I get a lot of questions of why I don't actually film in my kitchen, and it's because my kitchen is actually really, really dark. So a lot of my videos I do over here on our dining room table. It's a lot lighter in here because of these two big windows there. But we are redoing our table right now, and so I can't use it. So we actually got this table from my sister. Her husband and grandpa built it, and the top of it was extremely sticky, just worn out and being through a lot of years of eating at. It was definitely time to resurface it. So, so he applied paint stripper, and then he sanded it, and then we also like cleaned out all of the cracks and we are refilling that with some caulk and restaining it. So anyway, I won't be able to use my table for a few more days, which is why I'll be cooking in here. But it's probably one of my most like common questions is asking, <laughs> people are constantly asking why I'm always using my dining room table for cooking. Uh, Jacob, say hi. <laughs> and it's not where I use for cooking. If I'm not videoing, I definitely cook in here. But when I'm videoing, I'll go out to the dining room just because the lighting is so much better. So right off my kitchen here, this is all my stuff that is normally on my table. It's kind of a mess in here. But is this door here that leads out to my sunroom. And this sunroom is one of my favorite rooms in the house. It's so beautiful right now during the fall. It's a little cold today, but we spend so much time out here. We have this beautiful view off our back porch here where we can see like 10 miles and into a neighboring town. It's just beautiful out here. So I like to spend a lot of time here and I absolutely love this sunroom, but because of it, we have this one small window here and this door, but obviously it doesn't bring in a lot of sun because of the porch. So this room here is very, very dark. I mean, right now it's like full sun outside. It looks decent with light right now, but if it's at all overcast or anything, you just see like when I'm over here cooking, it's very, very dark. So because I do primarily cooking videos here on my channel, I don't like to do many of them in here. It just looks way better on camera if it's out there because if I turn on like fake lights, which I do use some like box lighting, or if I like edit it and add extra light, it looks really like rainy. So I try to do most of my filming out there in the dining room. It's not even that far. I mean, you can see it's just right there. It's not that big of a deal. But because I get so many questions, I figured it'd be a good time to talk about it because I'm gonna be cooking a lot of the meals for this video right here where I typically cook when I'm not filming. So I'm gonna be sharing with you guys just like a what we eat in a week video and um, just doing some different meals. Today I'm actually gonna be making something different that I've never made before. It's going to be using lamb and we're using, um, making like lamb pot stickers. Basically it's something that my husband wanted to make for his blog and so we're gonna be making it today and I thought I would just video it and most likely what I make here on camera will not be the final product that goes on his blog because typically it takes us a couple times of recipe testing before it actually gets the recipe on the blog. But I'm going to film what we make today, our first attempt, and then I will link the final recipe down in the description box below. So if you wanna make something similar, you can. <laughs>
so today is going to be a very busy day in the kitchen. We have a few trees outside that are um, dead and need to come down. And where they are by the house, we actually have to turn off our electric tomorrow in order to get them down because we are afraid that they could fall online. So we have like someone coming out to help us get the trees down. But the thing I'm worried about is that the electric company is coming tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 to turn off our electric, which means I won't be able to do any cooking tomorrow. Thankfully, we are on a well, and our well is not on our property. It's a shared well with a few of our neighbors, and so we will have water tomorrow, but we will not have any power they're turning off, like I said, between 8 and 10, and I don't know exactly when they'll be turning it on. I guess that really depends on how long it takes to get the trees down safely and all of that. So, I am making a huge batch of chili with, so right now I'm just starting some black beans. I don't have any red beans or um, kidney beans, so I'm just doing black beans. I'm gonna get those going in my Instapot, and then I'm gonna start browning some meat. Um, we have sausage and beef, so I'm gonna do a combination of the two. All right, adding in more water. So I'm doing these for 30 minutes, and I'll just let those go while I'm working on the other things. But I'm gonna make a huge batch that should be enough for hopefully lunch and dinner tomorrow, just in case we still are out of power going into the evening, then I don't have to worry about food. So my plan is to have this all cooked today, and then in the morning, just first thing right when I wake up, I'm gonna warm it up and then just put a lid on it, probably put it in my Instapot, maybe to insulate it to keep it warm, and then we'll just have chili to eat on throughout the day, and then hopefully we won't have to worry about any other meals. Now, it's also lunch time for today, and so I'm gonna be making, I have some pork chops here, so I'm just gonna be doing these on my cast iron skillet, and making some fried potatoes and veggies to go with that. So that'll be lunch for today, and then like I said, this chili will actually be for tomorrow. So the electric company got here right on time this morning to turn off the electric at 8 o'clock. And so right before that, at like 7.45, I started warming up the chili and got it to a boil and just put a lid on it so it would be nice and warm for lunchtime. So I'm going to go ahead and serve the kids some lunch. Um, the trees are getting taken down outside. I'm going to show you guys some clips of that because it's actually really fascinating to watch.
so we are getting the trees down today. This one right here by the sunroom is problematic. <laughs> they don't know exactly which way to make it drop in order for it not to take out other alive trees or hit the house or the power lines are over like right over on this side of the road over here. So still trying to figure that one out, but the other ones are going down smoothly. I'm excited for this job to be done. I did not realize how big of a mess was gonna be left whenever this was done. I mean, our whole entire driveway is filled with trees now. I mean, dead trees, but Nathan is working on chopping it up. Now we still have a lot of firewood for the year. Okay, so for this next meal, we're making green pork chili. We have so many pork chops because we recently got a whole hog, and so we have lots of pork chops. So for this one, I just browned some pork chops and some butter. Once they were seared, I just cut them into like one inch cubes. And then I made a chili with them by adding in some onions and garlic and some green salsa. And this was actually super delicious. This was my husband's idea. And I didn't think the kids would like it because I thought it'd be too spicy for them. But even my daughter who does not like anything spicy at all, ate this and liked it. So. It was just some pork chili. We'll definitely be doing this again since we have so many pork chops. I do have this recipe on my husband's blog and so we will link it below for you. Once it was finished, we topped it with some cheese and sour cream. For the next meal, I'm making some shrimp and broccoli, and I'm starting off by making some rice just with some homemade bone broth and brown rice. For the shrimp and broccoli, I am sauteing some butter and garlic in my cast iron skillet, adding in some frozen broccoli and some fresh shrimp. While the broccoli and shrimp were cooking, I made a sauce to pour over top of it. I used melted butter, some coconut aminos, a little bit of honey and some sesame seeds. I poured the sauce over the broccoli and shrimp and then I just stirred it all together and let it simmer on the stove until everything was cooked through. Mm -hmm. 